Every day, we're surrounded by technological devices that make our lives easier. But they would be entirely useless without batteries. The miniature power plants come in all shapes and sizes. Unfortunately, they don't always live up to their promise. That we don't have enough energy density, that we, we can't use them for as long as we want. But I think the really bad things are the fact that they die, and they die so quickly. And so a mobile phone battery after a couple of years won't have the same capacity. Uh, if you have an electric vehicle battery, they're designed to last longer but still after seven to 10 years, it won't have the same capacity. And so the question then is, why does that happen? And this is one of the things that my work focuses on. Claire Gray is professor in the chemistry department of world-renowned Cambridge University. For many years, batteries have been of particular interest to her. I find batteries fascinating because even though you think they've been around for centuries now, there are some really interesting, both structural and electronic things that go on inside them. And I'm fascinated by trying to figure out what's going on and solving some of the problems associated with them. But how do you figure out what goes on inside this black box? To increase a battery's capacity and longevity, Claire Gray and her team need to peek inside. They have adapted a special kind of spectroscopy to do just that. In this laboratory, the inner workings of batteries can be monitored without cutting them open and while they are operating. A small test battery is placed inside a metal coil and then inserted into a superconducting magnet. The coil then emits strong radio wave pulses which excite the atoms inside the battery in such a way that each chemical element produces its own characteristic resonance. The computer can interpret these signals at a very fine scale. Just like a medical MRI scan allows doctors to see inside the human body, this nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy method NMR for short, allows researchers to look inside a battery and interpret its behavior in real time. So many people will be familiar with magnetic resonance imaging that you have in hospitals. And there you would image a knee or a tumor, and you do that based on the water or the protons. And that then allows you to look at the sort of soft tissue. In our lithium ion batteries, we look at the lithiums and we see what they get up to. We see them moving from one side, from the anode to the cathode, we see them moving. And we don't just do imaging, we do something called spectroscopy. And that's where we actually look at the signatures of the atom and all the things that are around it, and also how fast it moves. Testing existing batteries is one aspect, but what could really advance technology is the development of entirely new types of batteries. One of these inventions is the lithium air battery being assembled here. It uses the air's oxygen as a reagent. Compared to standard lithium ion batteries, these could be much lighter and run for much longer. The ultimate battery is the so-called lithium air battery, and that's a battery where you react lithium with oxygen in the air to form lithium peroxide, or in our case, lithium hydroxide. And in principle, that gives you 10 times the energy density of a conventional lithium ion battery. And it gives you energy density that's in principle the same as petrol or gasoline. So it's the ultimate battery. And so it's the one that if you could get that to work would be game changing. And that is what Claire Gray is aiming for, to change the game in favor of sustainable, climate-friendly energy supplies. Electromobility requires powerful batteries. But to make batteries in cars, mobile phones and laptops more efficient and long-lived, we need to understand what kills them. One bane of conventional batteries are the so-called dendrites. These are unwanted tiny finger-like projections of lithium deposited during the charging process. They are one of the safety issues in lithium-ion batteries. And so when you make a battery, it's consists of a cathode and an anode, and the anode is typically graphite. And so it's the same graphite that you have in a pencil. 
And when you charge your battery, the lithium ions go from the cathode to the anode. And if you're charging too fast, you can't actually get the lithium ions in between the layers of carbon, so the graphite layers. And instead, you get these lithium deposits that form on the carbon. And so they form these filaments and fibres. And if they grow too large, then they will connect the anode to the cathode and short circuit the battery. When you get a short circuit, the battery discharges very fast, it heats up, and that's when you get fires and explosions. So it's one of, this, one of the failure mechanisms of a lithium-ion battery. Claire's NMR methods have helped understand and prevent dendrite formation, and her work on new types of batteries is groundbreaking. But still, the batteries that we're designing are so far from being commercial that uh, it's still very much a research lab project. So, Claire Gray still faces a number of obstacles, but they do not prevent her from moving forward. She remains committed to making alternative energy sources more and more efficient. My biggest wish, well, I actually have two wishes. One, I really want to contribute to the whole area of making better batteries for climate change. And my second one is to develop some really cool fundamental science to do this. Fighting climate change with science, an opportunity and a great challenge. The biggest challenge I have facing my research, to be honest, is just the time to do all the different things I want to do.